Hi there, I'm Nikki Sutton and I help people realise the infinite nature of self and of reality. Welcome. How to release a spirit attached to you or spirit attachment. Now, some people might suspect they have a spirit attachment and it may or may not be that. And often we're quick to think that we do when actually we don't. And I'll explain what it might be in a moment. I know that this can be a very draining, tiring experience. The bit of time that I had that happening, I did not feel myself whatsoever. I have clients that have experienced the same thing and I know that it can be a scary, nasty time but we have to move through that because being in a scary, nasty time makes our vibration very low and that causes them to remain. So this tends to occur very occasionally to few people, a lot less than we suspect. It tends to occur when we reach a low vibration. So if we are especially long-term in a low vibration. So it may happen after a negative or shocking event a bereavement, a loss of job, injury, or if we're in need of healing long term, we've got a lot of subconscious work we need to do, we don't realise it yet. But it still rarely happens in these instances. It's not something I want you to worry about. In fact, our mental attitude of not having such a thing because our thoughts and intentions create reality, that goes a long way to protecting you from such a thing. So who could it be? When we do attract a spirit uh, of uh, a negative leaning, and by that I mean they feel sad, depressed, angry, they have lots of guilt and fear and all the negative emotions you can imagine, they tend to attract to us because they resonate with our own vibration. And the reason for that is that they gain comfort. It's like for like. They gain comfort in wallowing in our negative energy because they feel that way too. It feels like we can empathise with them if we're feeling that way too. They feel at home in our energy field. They draw energy from us and leaving us with lots of symptoms. Now, the symptoms that we can experience are, for example, feeling their emotions. We can feel excess levels of negative emotions. We can feel fatigue because they're drawing off us all the time. We can feel their pain, not just emotional pain. We can feel their physical pain too. Now I know they're not a physical body, but in their lifetime they may have had great physical pain and they're uh, continuing to uh, live in that vibration, live in that reality, experiencing what they perceive as physical pain and then psychically this is rubbing off on you. So you might experience the ailments that that spirit was experiencing in their lifetime. You may have depression, it may increase your depression. You may experience a poor immune system, so you might be getting ill all the time because your energy is constantly trying to combat, compensate for this energy drain. You may have nausea. Now, there's lots of causes for things like nausea. So, you know, it, it may be something physical, for example, uh, a low uh, amount or poor balance of bacteria in your gut, healthy bacteria, that's one thing that can cause nausea. Um, but uh, nausea is something that you can experience. Also back pain, because sometimes spirits uh, tend to have an energy, energetic attachment to you from your back. I know that sounds weird from, it's usually from the back, from the back of your head, lower back, upper back, backside. Also, you can experience sleeplessness because you're experiencing emotions, thoughts, feelings of an entity which are, which never sleeps. And also your behaviours can be a bit strange. You find yourself performing funny little rituals or behaviours or routines you never did before because you are picking up on their habits and behaviours that they had during their lifetime. It could be a departed loved one who can't let go or wants to stay. Maybe they don't realise that they've died and they're not moving on to the spirit world. They're not taking that step. They're hanging on and maybe they're in a low vibration themselves. It may have been terribly shocking being separated from you and they don't want to be. There may also be a reluctance to let go on both sides. 
if your intention is to not let someone go who's passed on, your energies can keep them here and encourage them to be here. It's like an energetic grapple you have on their soul and, and they have it into you. So it's a reluctance on both sides to let go. Normally when a spirit, our loved one passes over, they might come and go. They would go spirit side and then come back and watch over us and the energy is light and, and positive and they're receiving healing and what have you. But sometimes a spirit doesn't want to let go and they'll proper hang around all the time and you can feel them there. But consider it might be a thought form instead. And this is why I say it's rare because more often than not, if we have a lot of negative energy building up, so we've lost our job, it's a terrible shock and we don't know what we're going to do and it can send us into depression, or if we have long-term healing that needs doing, we have a build-up of negative energy that just sits around us and it sits in our energy field and in our mind, body, spirit complex and it ends up with, you end up with residual energies around your home and you end up wallowing in it. Now, this energy can sort of gather in, in mass and focus and intensity and turn into a sort of a being in itself with a, a mild level of consciousness, especially if you believe it's an entity. It's like you're giving it consciousness of its own. Your thoughts create reality. If you believe there's an entity with you, you're feeling very negative. It's like you're creating a thought form entity of your own. So consider that instead of uh, assuming an entity is attached to you, which still does sometimes happen. So in a minute, I'll go into ways to release an entity or a thought form of this type. So a spirit attachment can happen suddenly. So that's one way to know that it's not a thought form, because if it's a thought form, it usually accumulates um, over a few days or weeks or longer even but if it's a spirit attachment you can suddenly feel very different very suddenly so that's one way to know now this is why ouija boards are bad because you're just opening up for it's like you're inviting them in and they'll come along see what your vibration is like oh this person might be a bit angry or a little bit sad day to day i could feed off that it's like saying hey here i am come and join me. So summoning negative entities. I know you'd never do that. I know you know Ouija boards are bad, but I'm just saying. So just a little experience of my own to share with you. A couple of years back, I think I let in some darkness. Now this wasn't due to my own vibration. It was a mo momentary lapse. And what was happening was I was researching for a video on symbolism that the cabal or whatever you want to call them uh, use uh, to put in TV programs and in movie symbolism to trigger things in our subconscious minds. And as I was researching this symbolism, I came upon, uh, I won't say the word, but I'll just write it up here with stars in between each of the letters. Uh, so not to say it or spell it out properly, but I was researching that individual um, and the symbolism and how it's placed in movies, especially kids movies as well. And because I was observing imagery of that type for about half an hour, um, it let something in because I'm sending out that energetic signature that I'm observing that. And this is why we don't want to be seeing these symbols and images placed in movies and TV. Um, and what happened was soon after that I went to record a video and when I played the footage back I noticed about um, a two minute section where I was talking to myself and I don't remember doing it. I was mumbling all kinds of worried, funny, grumpy things that I don't remember doing. And it was, I, I should have kept the footage, but maybe actually not, I shouldn't show it to you because it contains negative vibration. I watched it back and I was, I was really concerned and I realized what had happened. And actually I got into a really grumpy, funny, paranoid mood, which is completely unlike me. So I realized that I'd acquired some energy or acquired some connection with something very negative 
I wasn't saying I was possessed or there was something attached to me, but I had linked in some way to something negative due to the imagery I was looking at. And it caused me to talk to myself in a way that I didn't remember doing. And it was very upsetting indeed. I was just sitting there mumbling to myself for about a minute about things on camera. So I immediately took action and cleansed. I got my partner to cleanse me with lots of uh, Palo Santo and those crystals and I had a salt bath and I meditated until it was all clear and it was all right as rain later. In that day, having the attitude that I am untouchable and love and light, nice orb of uh, white light energy placed around me, got my guides in, um, they wouldn't have blocked that because it was my free will in a way to be looking at that imagery. So that was my learning and experience, but then it was my free will to call them in and my guides were happy to assist and that was a lesson learned for me. So that's an example of a story where you can let in negativity depending on what you're doing there and my vibration had temporarily lowered because of the imagery I was looking at. Okay, so to release such an entity, what do we do? All right, so if you think you've got it bad, you believe there's an entity there, number one thing to do is to seek help. So you find a medium, you can find them online, find a local one who is trained in spirit release and invite them to your home and they'll come and cleanse you and cleanse your home. So with their psychic and mediumistic abilities, they'll sense how many entities there are. Usually there's one and what they're hanging on to, why they're there. They'll sense the whole situation and tell you about it. You see, the thing about a spirit attachment is that oftentimes it's just the spirit of a human being who needs some healing. So in a way, you can have sympathy for this spirit. It's nothing to be afraid of because you can deal with it in terms of helping the spirit to go to the light, to release you and you to release it. There's things you can do. So never worry or start getting fearful because it'll make it worse. It's just someone who needs some help and there's an opportunity for you to help them. Extremely, extremely rarely would you get an entity that's so negatively polarized you could call them or label them a demon. Um, a, a demon is it would be an entity that's extremely negatively polarized. An angel is an a entity that's extremely positively polarized, angelic entity. So, I mean, having some kind of demon come along, you, you hear stories about that and, and uh, records, and there's proof, you know, of instances of that, but that's super duper rare, okay. So the medium, getting back to the medium who you've invited in, they'd use ritual and prayer in order to help release the entity. Their guides will assist them in drawing the spirit out as well, because they always have a team in spirit that comes with them. They, the medium will psychically repair your energy field so that you feel much better. So the medium will attempt to bring in more light, more light into you and more light into your home. They should go around and cleanse your home as well, repeating affirmations and likely uh, smudging using sage or palo santo or some other incense as well. Okay, and the intention, the intention of the medium really is key here. The intention and the will of the medium, thoughts create reality, in order to allow the spirit to move on and go over. Also, your intention and will is key as well. You'd be amazed how many individuals tend to get so entrenched in their spirit att attachment, um, wallowing in it. And the will isn't always there for it to leave, but uh, with good, strong will and intent is very possible indeed. So some other ways that you can help prevent a spirit attachment or attempt to release it, but I'll always say to get in a medium who's trained in spirit release. So first of all, to always start by raising your vibration. Uh, so doing your inner work, I have a course on inner work on nikkisutton.com and that's a good place to start. I also have a playlist on YouTube on inner work, but I won't go into that now because it's way too big for this video. So 
perform actions that will raise your vibration, doing something pleasant, having a pleasant routine to do every day, a pleasant pastime or activity, spending time with family, meditation as well to help raise your vibration, smudging your home. I have a video on that. Also all kinds of life changes that you can do in attempt to raise your vibration. I have a guided meditation on my guided meditation channel for raising your vibration. I'll put links in the description to all of these. Practicing mindfulness in the present moment, uh, letting in light while you're meditating, so visualizing lots of healing prana energy coming into your being from above, uh, coming down and cleansing all your chakras. So all the ways you can figure to raise your vibration will help you because then you're unpalatable for negative entities to be hanging around because they don't want to be with someone or near someone of a high vibration because it will either turn them positive, it will rub off on them and they don't want that or your vibration is just out of alignment with theirs. A negative entity that feeds on negative energy is around someone who's full of positive energy it's going to be like poison to them it's not it's not nice it's unpalatable it's not where they want to be so another thing you can do is perform a visualization so during meditation remember thought creates reality you visualize this entity around you walking into the light and you imagine a doorway of light that connects the spirit world and you imagine them walking into the light so this will either psychically connect with them and give them the instructions to do so or this will literally manifest that happening so you can try and do that yourself visualize them walking into the light so make sure you meditate for about 15 minutes first to relax yourself down because in that state the subconscious mind is dominant and that's how we do this work using the subconscious mind so another thing you can do is to call upon your guides to help you we all have guides we have friends that travel with us through space and time and oftentimes if you don't ask you don't get because our free will is key and our spirit guides don't want to infringe on our free will so ask them for their help ask them to take the entity into the light and give them instructions to do so because oftentimes spirits attached to us don't realize that's what they're supposed to do and another thing you can do lastly is your intention and prayers. You can say some prayers or affirmations over and over again. And what this does is again creates reality. If visualization is not your thing and the previous technique of visualizing a doorway of light and visualizing them walking away into it, if visualization is not your thing then what you can use is affirmations or prayers prayers that say head to the light leave me now go over to the other side it's time for you to leave or say anything else like that that you feel is appropriate and this creates reality again so through affirmations and prayers we're creating we're setting out through intention what is to happen and note that you are a 3d entity in this reality incarnate you may be moving to the fourth density, but you're still incarnate as a human here in the third density. So that means you're in charge here and your thoughts and intentions are the final say. So if you're performing prayers or affirmations to ask them to leave in love and light, go to the light in love and light, it's time for you to leave. That is what will occur. But again, if none of this is successful, do get a medium in who's trained in spirit release. So I hope that's helped you today on how to release a spirit attachment. Let me and others know what you think in the comments section below and any tips that you've had or any experiences that you've had. So please consider visiting nikkisutton.com. I've got two great online interactive courses there to help expand your mind and your potential, including my new intuitive and psychic development course. And remember to click subscribe if you're not already a subscriber to receive regular spiritual inspiration on your journey through life. And remember to click that bell button too for notifications because they're raising the mass vibration together. I hope you're all doing really well. So go now in love and peace.